Okay, so now let's try an example with a rigid tank. Um, sorry, an unsteady flow process today, which involves a rigid tank. So what's going on here? Well, I have a rigid tank. It's initially completely empty, and it's very insulated. That's important for us. I have steam that is flowing past it. It's at a constant pressure and temperature. And then I open this valve until the tank is completely filled, and then I close the valve again. And we want to find out what is the final temperature of the steam in the tank. Your initial thought is, well, that's obvious. If the steam that's flowing in is 300 degrees Celsius, so it'll be 300 degrees Celsius. I like that enthusiasm. You're wrong, but I like that enthusiasm. <laughs> and hey, this is one of those problems that gets me. Like, I look at it and it just it doesn't make sense in my brain. So we'll talk about why that is not the case as we look through this problem. So let's figure it out. Okay, step one, let's set up the mass balance. So initially my control volume is zero. So we're using both those formulas to help us out here. Mass in minus mass out is equal to change in mass of the system. And that's also equal to my final mass minus initial mass. I don't have any mass going out, that's zero. I don't have any initial mass, that's zero. And so from that, I get my nice little equation here, which says that my mass in is gonna be equal to my final mass. Okay, not too bad. Let's do the energy balance. So energy balance, same as always, energy in minus energy out is equal to change in energy of the system. And we have that very, very long equation. One thing, it didn't mention any work or heat transfer, it's adiabatic, so we don't have to worry about that. It didn't mention any kinetic energy, potential energy changes, it said there. Also told us our first mass was zero. So that huge equation simplifies down to this. And this right here is going to tell me why my temperature is different. Because if I have all my enthalpy equal to my internal energy at the end, well, they have different specific heat. And so therefore their temperatures will be different. Okay, so second thing we realize is our mass initial is equal to our final mass. So in the end, it's gonna say that our final internal energy, because it's a closed system, we only really care about internal energy, is equal to the enthalpy that's flowing in. Now, how do I figure out the enthalpy entering the tank? Well, it tells us that it's at one megapascal and 300 degrees Celsius. Nice round numbers, the steam, I'm guessing that this is superheated. So I'm not gonna show this to you, I've showed you a few several times in the past few problems, but we would just go to our superheated tables, I would find one megapascal, I would find 300 degrees Celsius, and then I would go and get the enthalpy, which would be 3051.6 kilojoules per kilogram. So that's my enthalpy flowing in, and that's gonna be equal to my internal energy of the closed tank. So now we gotta use that to find the temperature. And this time I am gonna help you do it because I want you to see where this is coming from. So I'm gonna give you the answer, we'll go from there. So things we know. One, we know that the pressure inside that tank has to still be one megapascal. Its temperature doesn't, but the pressure that was flowing into it was one megapascal, and so it has to stay one megapascal. But what's the temperature? Well, we're gonna use internal energy to find it, and we're gonna assume that the steam that's inside of that tank is still superheated. So I wasn't gonna go there the first one, but I'm gonna show you going in the reverse direction here. So we use internal energy to find it this time. So let's jump to those tables. Okay, so now let's look at the superheated tables for water so we can figure this out. So here they are. We have a pressure, two megapascals. Was it two megapascals? Let's see, let's go back to it real quick. One megapascal, I'm already off, my bad. And if you hear any singing in the background, that is my daughter, and she is having an absolutely glorious time. And I'm gonna find the internal energy, that's this column, to figure out the temperature. Now, unluckily for me, I'm looking right here. My internal energy is 3051. And if I look right here, that is right in between these two. Now I will say this, it's about halfway. And so I can kind of guesstimate that this would be halfway here. And I haven't done interpolation in a while. So I'd like to show that to you right now. So we're gonna go ahead and interpolate. I'll write out the equation for you at the very least so you can see it. So let's do that. Here we go. I'm gonna pull these numbers out. And we'll be good to go. Let's see, right here. Beautiful. So, my interpolation equation, 
I'm going to show it to you right now, just so we know this is temperature, that's internal energy. Don't need any of this information because we're not using that one. And so here's how interpolation works. The thing I want to know is temperature. That will be equal to T low plus, make sure I do this right, don't want to do it wrong, U minus U low times T high minus T low over U high minus U low. What's low, what's high? Well, this top line is low, this bottom line is high, and from that I can put it in there. As a note, it doesn't actually matter. I can completely reverse these, and it would still give me the exact same answer for this method, which is really nice. I like it a lot for that. Okay, other things. This is the part that you know. I know this. So always put what you know right there. I know the internal energy. This is the thing I don't know. Put that one there. And this equation will work for any kind of interpolation you want. Now if I plug all these numbers in, I'll just go ahead and write them out. We'll get the following numbers. Okay, so I'll have 400 plus U minus U low, which I forgot what U low is. I'll go ahead and pull it out here. Let's see. That was 3051.6. Okay, big numbers. Woo! Minus U low, which is 2957 times T high minus T low, which I already know is 100, I'm just going to say that's 500 minus 400, over U high minus U low. Don't want to try to do that math in my head. I'll just write it out. There you go. And so when we get that, if I solve it, I get somewhere around 450, I think it's 453 to be exact, and I have my answer. So this is the interpolation equation I use for everything. It really, really helps. Works out really good. So write it down. Use it and succeed. And so with that, we get back to our problem here. I'm just gonna jump back rather than even worrying about from there. Boop, 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 boop. And we get that our final temperature is 456.1 degrees Celsius. So it is significantly higher, and this is because of the difference in specific heat between a constant pressure process where we are initially and a constant volume process at the end. That's really kind of oversimplifying it there. Just know that a lot of your energy has gone into the temperature because all the energy that was in the flow work had to go to temperature. That's like, remember, H is equal to U plus, ooh, U plus PV. And so that's where my, my flow work is going into temperature as well instead of being part of the enthalpy. So that's it. Let the learning continue. Hopefully you enjoy these videos, and I'll see you all next chapter. Have a good one. Goodbye.